1989, uh, a film came out called The Wizard, uh, and basically the film was uh, basically a product placement for uh, Nintendo, uh, more specifically Super Mario Bros. 3. But it basically followed uh, three kids uh, as they made their way across country, uh, and one of them they found out uh, is really good at video games. He ends up going into a video game tournament, and you know. It chronicles their adventures across the country, and while they're uh, going across country, uh, they run into one of the antagonists, who's also playing in the tournament, the video game tournament in California, uh, Lucas. And uh, Lucas is showing off his collection of games and his prowess at the games to the three heroes. And uh, he pulls out the power glove, which was an accessory that uh, is also showed off in the in the video. And, uh, he plays Rad Racer with it, uh, and after he finishes, you know, the game, he basically says, I love the power glove. It's so bad. So that's where the title for this uh, episode comes from, because uh, we'll be getting the power glove. But unlike the power glove, which was, I guess you could say, Nintendo's uh, first attempt at motion control, it was basically a glove that had a controller attached to it, but it had sensors in the fingers, so... You can uh, do things like uh, throw punches to play Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. You can uh, mimic uh, steering a car with a steering wheel for games like Rad Racer. There's actually two other games uh, that were designed specifically for uh, the Power Glove. Uh, Super Glove Ball, a 3D puzzle maze game, and uh, Bad Street Brawlers, uh, a beat-em-up game. Uh, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, the power glove, this power glove that we're going to get is uh, not so bad because it, uh, it's going to allow us to do several new things. But before we start talking about the power glove, uh, the good one that we're going to pick up in this uh, episode, uh, we're going to pick up another clue here. Uh, this is really more like pertains to the first quest. Uh, it's not really relevant to the second quest, I just forgot to show it off. But uh, if we pick the five or the ten rupees, he tells us uh, what the other. Uh, hint person says, the one who gives the directions to the maze, that it will be mangled by Deku Scrubs. So in the previous uh, screen, and this screen, you bomb the rightmost wall, and it opens up the one-way passage. Uh, so that's what the clue refers to as uh, four bombs for the for four rightmost rocks. It basically gives you a clue to where you'd find the dungeon, uh, level seven in the first quest. Because in the screen, uh, in the next screen over to the left, uh, we bomb uh, rightmost wall, and that leads to another one way. It takes us to a screen that I'll show off, where if we bomb the upper right corner, it would take us to the entrance to level seven in the first quest. So, not uh, relevant for this quest, but like I said, I want to show everything off. So, but here is the screen number three where we bomb the rightmost wall. We one way into here, and then uh, if you go back and look at uh, the first quest uh, that's placed, uh, you'll see that I bomb in the upper right corner there, above where that blue wizard that I just defeated was, and that's the entrance to level 7. But nothing here in this thing, but there is a dungeon entrance over to the right. Dungeon L, which is basically an upside down 7 if you think about it. And, uh, We'll be uh, going into there to actually complete it. It's going to take uh, a while, though, because I guess the L stands for long. So we'll be uh, going in here and uh, doing a lot of stuff. Uh, main objective is, obviously, of course, to rescue the Tetrog Fairy. But before we do that, we're going to pick up the Power Glove. I said I'd get back to talking about it, and uh, well, now it's time to do it. So uh, the Power Glove is going to allow us to push... Uh, certain blocks on the overworld, specifically the blocks that open up the, uh, the warp paths that allow us to jump around uh, to fix points on the overworld map. It'll also allow us to uh, push certain blocks in uh, on certain rooms that will access things such as uh, treasure rooms, uh, uh, friendly garages who will give uh, money uh, to us, so, uh, it's definitely going to open up a lot of stuff for us. 
just uh, trying to get some uh, extra rupees here from these guys that are kind of easy to defeat. Uh, but we're going to uh, turn around then to uh, go back into the staircase that we passed up earlier. But I'm going to get some rupees here. So we just uh, farm these little enemies here real quick. No, nope. so didn't get to too much, but oh well. So let's head on back. Took a slight detour there, but we're going to push this block and head deeper into the dungeon. We didn't come on um, get the power glove first time we went through this dungeon because as you'll see the power glove is guarded by a lot of uh, Gleok monsters and uh, they're going to be tough as is uh, and the first time we came into this dungeon we had less hearts uh, two less hearts and we didn't have the uh, white sword or the blue mail so we had uh, our offense was only half as good and our defense was only half as good so and we had two less hearts, so which is actually more like more like four hearts because of the double defense that we have now thanks to the blue tunic. So let's see, what is Zelda gonna tell us here? A trap is nearby. Be careful. I don't know if there's any specific trap rooms that she can really be referring to. Other than maybe uh, all the multiple Gleox will be facing. Here's one of them right now. We got a four, uh, four-handed Gleox. So will be, be one of many. So yeah, we have to uh, fight this guy because we're gonna have to return back to that room we just came from, so we can push the uh, block down, so we can go to the uh, through the east door. We couldn't do that because. We approached from the west, so when we pushed the block, it ended up uh, blocking off. We can only go north and south, and we didn't want to go south because that takes us back to uh, the beginning, to uh, the room where that uh, staircase appears if you just stay in the room for a little bit. So, but now, since we ended from the north, we can push the block south and head over to the east. And we got another uh, Gliok here. He has one less hand, but he has uh, much more uh, advantageous terrain uh, to fight us with. Uh, we can't maneuver fully around the room because of the uh, all the water tiles, and we can get stuck on the ladder, uh, so it makes it a little bit more tougher. Same thing with this guy here. We have even less room to maneuver. We only have a two-wide column uh, to walk around on. But thankfully, uh, it seems as we lose maneuver, we, as we lose man room to maneuver in, uh, the Gleok loses heads to hold us with. So we just want to bomb into that room to uh, get a key, and uh, we bomb up in this room here to get some more stuff, get another key. And an interesting thing is, um, in the last quest in level nine uh, dungeon. We, uh, we went around and uh, we had to get one key to allow us to get to the magical key that opened up the remaining doors in the dungeon. In this uh, quest, we're actually going to have to uh, enter level 9 with uh, four keys uh, that we're going to get from, uh, we'll be picking up extra keys in all of the uh, dungeons. And uh, those keys will be used to, uh, along with a few other keys that we find in level 9 to get the magical key to finally allow us to uh, complete that dungeon. So there we got the power glove and now it's time for us to uh, head back and uh, finish up the rest of the dungeon. Time for some backtracking. Head back around finish these guys off again, who annoyingly keep um, respawning just like they did in um, level U. You know, wink. And we head down here and this is the room back at the beginning. Everything's going to look familiar. We're going to see these uh, yellow, uh, orange iron knuckle, oh, dark nuts again. Iron knuckles in Zelda 2. 
they pretty much function the same way. They are uh, armored knights that basically uh, can be tough to deal with if you don't know how to, uh, you know, penetrate their defenses. It's always nice when they uh, get uh, spawned in uh, these uh, locations where they can't hurt you, but you can hurt them. Remember, you kind of clip into uh, the bottom of a block from below, and your sword can reach through that block, so a lot of times you can hit enemies uh, from below. No. Can I just take out these guys again. We don't have to because the door is open for us, but... Yeah. Might as well uh, take him out. And we'll head back into this stairway. Say so we just keep uh, defeating those enemies just to try to get some extra rupees. Yep. And we're in uh, a room that we uh, were in earlier, but now we have the white sword so we can defeat these enemies permanently and get drops from them. We'll take advantage of being able to stab up through the blocks to take out a few more if they cooperate, but now nah, they're smart. So, nope. Uh, last time we went right to uh, pick up the uh, meat. As you can see, we got the blocks filled out on that side. So, let's uh, go to some other rooms here. Now we've been in this room before, but uh, we weren't able to access this uh, staircase because the way we went through it was uh, around the lower loop there. We've got a whole bunch of fairies there. That's always nice. Filling up our life. Let's hop on down. Look. And we're in another very similar looking room. It's nice that all these enemies spawned uh, away from us, so we can uh, pick a few off from uh, the safety of uh, the inside here. They can't hit us, but we can hit them. It's always good. Still playing tactical, even though we've gotten a whole bunch of more uh, uh, equipment and defensive and offensive uh, capabilities. Still want to play smart. Finish him off, and we've got a thing right when we don't need it anymore. Uh oh. What do we got here? Ah, oh, money or your life! This is another reason why we were uh, farming those rupees, rupees earlier. So. And we got another manhandler. These are uh, causing us some problems. Wait, woohoo! Took it out, finally. Head on down this way. We got one of these uh, rooms. All right, finished him off. I'm just gonna get off the ladder. I like these uh, rooms because they kind of force you to go through them twice, so it allows you to kind of double the uh, size of the labyrinth without necessarily adding an additional room. Feel free to use your bombs on these guys. Uh, two bombs uh, take them out, as opposed to four shots with the white sword. Once we start getting their numbers down a little bit, uh, then you can just, if you want to save your bombs, you can. But Ooh, there we go. You can also use that little trick where, remember, your sword has a little bit of a sideways hitbox. So we can uh, stand on the side and poke down and get uh, hits on them, even though they're technically uh, not on the same, I guess, uh, tile as the sword. So this is the room where we picked up the key from the side to the uh, uh, west there is the power glove room. Yeah, we had to pick up the key from the side because uh, even if we defeat all these monsters here, uh, that block, it, you can't push it, so... those monsters live, they could have done some evil later on. 
might think, oh, well, they're just lackeys. But hey, the Thunderbird was a lackey in Zelda 2, and now he's the big bad in this game. So, mm -hmm. And all the enemies respawned, but now they spawned away from us, so that's nice. Get back over here, pick up those bombs that were just hanging out there. And we didn't hit the lottery for the third time. We actually had two enemies spawn, um, but they weren't really dangerous, so lucky us. And we got another empty room. Another empty room means secret passage. This will take us to the final section uh, of the, the dungeon. Just a few more rooms to go to pick up our, our fairy and our heart. Use the boomerang. Pick up that thing. All right. Now we're free to finish these guys off and not have to worry about taking any more damage. And if we can get through this dungeon without uh, using up our potion, that'd be good. Because then that way we uh, only would have to buy a blue potion to get the orange potion that we need. So, ooh, missed the shot. Thought we could get it. Oh, bad archery. Yeah. Come on, Link, you gotta work on, I mean, got, come on, Chloe, you gotta work on your uh, archery skills. Who's Link? I don't know. No, Link is the default name for the hero. It was supposed to be like, uh, the justification being that uh, he was like the app, he was the, the player avatar. He was their Link into the world of Zelda, so that's where the initial nickname came from. But thankfully the game gives you the option to name uh, your hero after whatever. And uh, like all my Let's Plays, I'm naming a hero after a departed pet uh, from someone in the Marty Mouse House uh, community. So, and it's fitting with this uh, Chloe uh, because uh, Chloe's mom uh, is actually a big fan of Zelda, so it was uh, really appropriate that uh, you know Chloe got to be star in a Zelda game, and uh, so was uh, Oakley. Oakley was uh, another pet of the same uh, owner, and uh, Oakley is the hero in uh, another Zelda game that um, left playing, the, uh, Link's Awakening uh, for the Game Boy. So very fitting. Not fitting as new enemies respawn, so we have to defeat more enemies to get the Tetrarch Fairy. But as you can see, there's the full completed map. And level L is in the books. Halfway done. So let's pop on out, clear out this room so no enemies can hurt us. And then this is where we'll pick off in our next episode. Take care, have a good day. See you in the next episode. Bye.